where moments before the final quarterfinal game of the day, it will feature Chicago Heights Bloom from the Sika East Conference in Cook County, Chicago Heights, and of course the Blue Devils from Quincy and Adams County. The Trojans and the Blue Devils should be a, a dandy. Of course, Lincoln and King were the winners earlier. Gordon Tech joined the final four, and one of these teams will also do that. We just saw a sizzler of a game, 72 to 70. The final statistics coach show the shooting was exceptionally good. Yeah, and I think the, fi the uh, fact late in the ball game, Gordon Tech established themselves uh, as the uh, superior team on the boards, and maybe that was a difference in the contest. All right, we're set to go back to the floor. Here's Art Kimball. We're talking with uh, three people here that have kind of mixed reaction coming into the upcoming game between Bloom and Quincy. Gary Ingram is uh, our first guest, and Gary kind of introduces us to who you have with us. Okay, we have a foreign exchange student from Denmark, Ulrich Hansen. Ulrich Hansen lives with, with me in my home in Chicago Heights. Of course, he's a senior at Bloom right. while I graduated from Quincy High School in 71. Now, who's a good-looking young lady with us? This is our daughter. This is our, my daughter, Kara, Ulrich's sister here in the United States. Hi, Carol. How are you? Hi. Hi, girl. What do you think of basketball? Are you, I know you play basketball in Denmark, but not like they do here. No, oh, it's very exciting. I like it. It's great. Uh, I wish we had the same. It was just as popular in Denmark, but unfortunately, it's not. But it's great. I like it. Well, that's great. Gary, how in the world can you be around Bloom? You all live only a couple of blocks from the high school. Do they know you're a Quincy fan? Well, I think they do tonight, anyway. <laughs> they didn't know it when I bought the ticket, but now I can wear my jersey. I was going to say, you better uh, better check the house where you go home. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I can win either way, because if Bloom beats Quincy, well, then I've got Bloom to cheer for. But, of course, my my uh, tradition kind of goes with Quincy. Okay. What's your favorite sport? Well, I like soccer a lot. Soccer is a national sport in Denmark. Well, I'll tell you what, we're almost out of time, folks. Enjoy the ball game. May the best team win, huh? Okay, thanks. Cool. Well, there's a lot more than that. You know, we've we've looked at tape, and we've listened to scouting reports, and we haven't figured out a, a way yet to beat them, to be very honest with you. I think they're a little better than we are, but there are more important things. You know, for instance, you know, uh, two of the, the two greatest coaches in the history of Illinois high school basketball are out there watching you tonight, Jim. Dolph Stanley and Virgil Fletcher. And I want them to know that there are a lot of people remembering Dolph Stanley and Virgil Fletcher tonight. Neither one has perfect health, but they've come from behind before, and uh, we want them to know that there's a lot of people in this assembly hall praying for them. Jerry, why do I get the feeling that I'm not doing this interview? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Okay. The Peoria Emanuel game, very quickly, everybody's still buzzing about that at that super sectional game. Well, it was a great ball game. Dick Van Syke has got to be one of the, the greatest coaches in the history of this state also. And uh, we didn't think we could beat them either, but we've done it before. We were very fortunate uh, to win by one point. In fact, I celebrated twice in that ball game. When the horn went off, I celebrated, and then they got me back on the bench and said there's one more foul. And then when he missed that, I got to celebrate again. Now, did you really say that this is the first Quincy team you've ever had that really doesn't no, listen to you? Was that quote all. right? I said that in one specific instance. This is been a very coachable group one night for 10 minutes i said gee whiz at the end of the ball game i said they wouldn't listen to me wouldn't do what i want you watch these kids they'll do what i want every single time but that was taken completely out of context on a given instance jim jerry leggett congratulations go get him thank you very much that's the head coach of the quincy blue devils and now stepping in the head coach of chicago heights bloom you've seen him before mr frank darty who made it down here last year what about that game that's still burning your mind great game lost by one point to peoria central well it really doesn't burn it was just a a great ball game. The satisfying thing to me as a coach is nobody gave us a chance against Peoria, and we knew that we could play with them, and it was a great ball game and a great learning experience for us, and we're happy to be back down here again. A lot of sports writers get their thesaurus out to try and describe Brandon Cole. You're his coach. You see him every day. What kind of player is this? Well, Brandon is one of the best ball players I have ever seen. He's got tremendous three-point range, and if you go out on him, he's going to drive right around you. He plays both ends of the court. He's got a great attitude, and he's just a great, great person. Now, Frank, you, I know you've heard this before. Jerry Leggett just told me, quote, he doesn't have a chance here tonight. Now, you tell me the truth. It's going to be a good ball game. It's going to be a good ball game, and Jerry has a chance. He's played a great schedule. He's been here before. He knows what it's about. I think this game is going to boil down to adjustments against each other's defenses because 
He changes defenses, and so do we. What is their strength? At Quincy, they have always been able to pass the basketball exceptionally well. Is this team any different? No, it's basically the same type of ball club. Everybody tells us not to play man-to-man -man against them, but we're a pretty good man-to-man -man ball club, so we're going to try it at least and see what happens. But we'll mix up our defenses. They're a sound, fundamental ball club. So what about the rest of your ball club? I know that Brandon Cole gets a lot of the ink, but it takes a team effort. Well, we're really much better off offensively this year than we were last year. Dana Parker has averaged 11 points a game, very consistent, nine rebounds. Uh, Jeff Daniel, a return starter, has not had that good of a season, but he's turned it on in the tournament. And Mark Hampton, I think, is an unsung hero. He plays a nice defensive job for us, handles the ball a little bit out front for us. The one that's really helping us right now is Kalen Haynes. 6'8", who really has not had a good year, you know, during the regular season, but he also has stepped it up. So it's a good time to be doing all these things. Frank Darty, this is why you put in all the hours. Go get them. Yeah, it sure is. And we're again, we're happy to be down here. That's Frank Darty, the head coach of Chicago Heights Blue. And when I said Jerry Lake, it always and says that he Michael doesn't have Donald a chance. That's when you got to watch out. Let's go back to Art Kimball. Art. Thank you very much, Jim. And uh, we're with Mike O'Connell the head basketball coach at Joliet West. And Mike, you lost to this bloom ball club in the Super. And tell me, it was probably your finest ever to the uh, latter part of the season. Uh, Bloom was tough, and it uh, wasn't, wasn't one of our better efforts that night. Uh, we shot, in fact, I think it was 26%, yeah. and we've been shooting over 50% in the last eight games. But this Brandon Cole makes Bloom go. I was talking to Jerry Leggett and Quincy last night. I'm sure I couldn't hear Jerry's interview, but I know Mr. Cole's name must have come up. He's a senior. He's really at a peak right now, isn't he? Well, he sure does. But I'll tell you one thing. Last year, it was the Brandon Cole show. This year, they've got some other players. Uh, but Brandon, he took our game over. He, I think he was two for 12 the first half. Second half, he uh, he banked two in for three points. <laughs> and, I mean, they were literally off. Banked them in. I mean, in a horse, you got to call those shots, you know. <laughs> yeah. and, and just turned the whole game around. Your Joliet West program, though, uh, has progressed rather nicely. You had a good year overall. We're very happy. We won a conference two out of the last three years. Uh, again, this year winning the regional and sectional and being the Sweet 16. Our lower levels are doing well. So we're very happy and hopefully things will continue. Defensively, any trends in your conference? Uh, we're seeing fewer zones among the AA schools than we used to, aren't we? Well, yeah, it's funny. In our conference now, we saw uh, a lot of man-to-man -man this year. And I was kind of surprised by that, to be honest with you. Uh, we played Cole in the man-to-man -man the other night and switched two or three guys on him. And basically all he does out front is that, you know, he's quick and he'll get a couple picks here and he just fires. Who are some of the standouts for your Joliet West club? Well, we had a kid named Tony Marion, his three-year all-conference, yeah, right, right. uh, 6'6 kid. And uh, Michael Thompson, a little guard for us, did real well. And we had a surprise this year. We had a senior that never came out before, ended up averaging 12 points a game, uh, was a third-team all-area. And just, we've never had something like that happen before. You really got to be patient with the big kids, don't you? And uh, 6'6 is a big kid in high school. Well, we do. You know, and Tony, uh, Tony's gave us some great efforts. Yeah. Uh, his, his defense was just really came around this year. Actually, he's a better player on the outside. He shoots much better facing the bucket from 10 to 12 feet. Well, Mike, I saw your ball club at the Pontiac Holiday Tournament. I knew you were going to have a good run, and congratulations for a fine season. Thanks for the visit. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. Appreciate it. Mike O'Connell, the coach at uh, Joliet West. And now let's pause for these messages. Sawmill Creations, located at 110 West Broadway in Bradley at the Viaduct. For that distinctive gift, consider these cypress clocks, decorative plaques, rocker animals, authentic pennant clocks to show pride in your team or school, priced at $65 plus tax. To order, call 815-939-7044. Write or stop in. We'll be glad to serve you. Do we have the greatest jobs in the world of what? We do. CNN Sports Tonight. Well, we get to do it all. We get to bring you folks all of the scores, all of the meaningful and great highlights, plus, of course, the world we now play with us. We tackle the issues, comment on them, spend a half hour informing and entertaining. And we have a ball doing it. We have fun, and we can get tough. So join us, Nick Charles and Fred Hickman, every weeknight, 1130 Eastern Time, CNN Sports Tonight. back at the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana. And we're just moments away now before the game between Chicago Heights Bloom and Quincy. 
Earlier today, East St. Louis, Lincoln, and King were winners in the first set, and then Gordon Tech won earlier, so we have three of our four semifinalists coming up now will be deciding the fourth. The interesting uh, profile here, we've got the team from the Western Big Six, and you're familiar with the Blue Devils, Coach. Well, the Blue Devils are a very, uh, very well-conditioned ball club, very well coached, Lo located, of course, uh, in the west central part of the state, 25 and 5 on the year, enrollment of over 2,000. And uh, interestingly enough, finished second in the Western Big Six behind Rock Island. Making their 11th appearance, the Trojans of Bloom from the Sika East. And again, Royal Blue, 21 and 8 so far. They clipped Joliet West, 65 to 49 to get here. Quincy upset Peoria Manual to get here, 58 to 57. These matchups are going to be an interesting one tonight as we take a look at the two teams and look at the comparisons. Yeah, very interesting comparisons. Of course, Quincy is very, very patient ball club. They're going to go to the free throw line a lot, and, and so does uh, Bloom with a slashing type guard like a Brandon Cole. Uh, both ball clubs hit the boards well, and you're going to see quickness on the on the one end and maybe patience on the other end. Quincy shoots a little better percentage, but they'll take more two-point and inside shots where Bloom is better as a perimeter team with Brandon Cole exploding from three-point range. Well, that's exactly right. You know, you've got the uh, Quincy ball club that's experienced. It's a, it's a, a senior laden ball club, Frank. They're going to give away uh, a little bit of height to the Bloom ball club. And yet, uh, again, I think you're going to see the patience on the one end versus the quickness uh, on the other end. You've got to be careful that you'll become impatient against Quincy. One of the things to watch for when you watch the Quincy team play is special plays. They look to score on out-of-bounds plays, under the basket, on the sidelines. Jerry Leggett probably has uh, 10 or so out-of-bounds plays that Quincy actually tries to score 30, 40 feet from the basket. I think it's a well a, a point to take here is that uh, Coach Nardi said that most coaches that he's talked to said don't play Quincy a man-to-man, -man, but he's going to come out and try to play them a man-to-man, -man, and that's because they run a lot of specials. Coach Leggett likes to call a lot of special plays from the bench. Quincy doesn't have the foot speed to keep up with uh, Bloom. It'll be interesting to see how they try to guard Brandon Cole. I think you'll see Quincy in their traditional 1-2-2 tipping zone. That By that I mean they'll try to tip the ball out of that 1-2-2 defensive set and, and fill the lanes and get their own fast break going. What do you think is going to be the key to this game? I think, the, I think the key is going to be the word patience versus versus impatience. I really believe that. If a Brandon Cole can heat up on the outside and when he doesn't hit his kids inside can get the boards for him, then they're going to be in business. But watch out because Quincy is very patient. They don't beat themselves. All right. We'll be set now to meet the players for this fourth quarter final game. And for that, let's go to the public address announcer, Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players for this fourth and final quarterfinal round game featuring the Quincy Blue Devils and the Trojans of Chicago Heights Bloom. First, introducing the Blue Devils of Quincy Senior High School, entering this game with a record of 25 and 5. Here is the head coach in his 14th season at the school, Jerry Leggett. Assistant coaches, Tom Berry, Gary Hendrick, and Shane Barnes. And now let's meet the players. Number three, a 5'7 junior, Scott Noel. Number 10, a 6'1 senior, Ted Meyer. Number 12, a 5'10 junior, Chris O'Connell. Number 14, a 5'10 junior, Mark Conover. Number 22, a 6'2 sophomore, Sean Dean. Number 24, a 6'3 sophomore, Andy Wagoner. Number 34, Todd Wemhainer. Those are the Blue Devils of Quincy Senior High School. And now let's meet the Trojans of Bloom Township High School of Chicago Heights who enter this game with a record of 21 and 8. Here is the head coach in his eighth season at the school, Frank Nardi. His assistant coaches, Bob Eskew and Preston Bowler. Here are the players, number 12, a 5'11 junior, Kevin Connor. Number 15, a 5'9 junior, Makaria Fortson. Number 20, a 5'11 senior, Kerry Ellis. 
number 25, a 6'3 junior, Bill O'Toole. Number 30, a 6'2 senior, Maurice Aldridge. Number 32, a 6 foot senior, Maurice James. Number 34, a 6'2 junior, Gary Small. Number 40, a 6'8 sophomore, Terry Malo. Number 42, a 6'3 junior, Robert Barnes. And number 44, a 6'4 senior, Joe Barner. And now, here is the starting lineup for the Blue Trojans. At one forward, a 6'6 junior, 24, Dana Parker. At the other forward, a 6'1 junior, number 22, Jeff Daniel. At center, a 6'8 senior, number 35, Kalen Haynes. At one of the guards, a 6'2 junior, number 14, Mark Hampton. And at the other guard, a 6'1 senior, number 23, Brandon Cole. Those are the Trojans of Bloom Township High School of Chicago Heights. And now the officials, Bo Paprocki of Arlington Heights and Jim Lapatina of Edison. Back with the game in a moment. Now this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Park Producers. What's the other reason? For chopsticks. The other light, late night bite. Up in a minute, hey. The other fast family favorite. The other romance and candlelight. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. Sports Channel's coverage of the IHSA, Class A, and AA State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by the Chicago Tribune. Get big league coverage of your community in the new Preps Plus section. High school sports and more every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Chicago Tribune. And by the Jerry Gleason All-American Automotive Group. You're never more than minutes away from the best car deal in town with Gleason. Quincy's making its 28th trip to the finals of uh, the Western Big Six, of course. Chicago Heights Bloom in their 11th appearance from the Second East Conference in Cook County. And there you see the six Chicago area finalists, the starting lineups, the big match might be Wem Hainer and Cole, you see at the bottom. Good call. Very, very likely to be key figures in the outcome of this ball game, Frank. Quincy will wear the blue, as you see there, throng of fans trimmed in white. Bloom will wear white, trimmed in royal blue and red. Well, dinner is on the table, but for whom? We've got one to go. This could be a dandy. Quincy starts with the ball. Wild shot by Parker. Brought up ahead. He sees Webb Hainer. That's a deuce. But they can get into the transition game, but always under control. Cole, three. His first try. Push-off foul, Jeff Daniel. The Quincy Blue Devils have the state double-A record. 64 wins in a row. That came in 81-82. Great teams. And they're the last team to win the state tournament as undefeated champs. We've got that situation alive yet. Leper, a 6'8 sophomore. Both these teams have that. Webb Hainer missed. A run out for Cole. Brandon Cole slipped the ball behind his back, but first a block. Of course, Bloom can fill the lanes quickly. I don't think there's any question there's great athletes on the Bloom team. They fill the lane extremely well. Cole elected to take the ball himself. He was going to dish it off and push through the foul. Parker at 6'6", throws out on the court to 6'8", Kalen Hayes. 
Now he goes to the high post. Quincy zone. Zoning Brandon Cole like bleeding knock near a shark. Rebound to Tim Johnson. Now one thing about their 1-2-2 zone, whichever, the, whichever side of the court Brandon Cole is on, is going to draw a lot of attention from that wing player in Quincy's defense. This is Cole. This is a three. And that was right at the top of it. Oh, he's got as good a range as you'll find in a high school shooter. Diamond and one, zone trap, full court by Bloom. Rudd solves it, Tim Johnson, wing left. He's a horse, too. 6'5", 215. Quincy runs the offense. They like to look for Wemhainer. Lob, lob to Rudd, left-hander for two. There's a special. When we say that, we're not we're talking a special versus continuity offense. Parker gets free. He missed. Hayes tipped at it. Next rebound, Quincy. The Blue Devils run three on two. Wemhainer stop and pop. Rebound to Bloom. Look at the transition game. Under the whip of Brandon Cole. Lay up Parker. Check it, Daniel. Full court diamond in one trap pressure. Wemhainer got caught walking. Bloom five, Quincy four, five minutes first quarter. Those are the kinds of turnovers that you don't see Quincy make very often. They, uh, the last time out in the Super Sectional Championship game, I think they had like 12 turnovers. Jerry Leggett looks on. Frank Nardi said when he first came here the first time, he sat in the last row upstairs. Now he's looking up. Daniel gets another try. Out of bounds. Bloom keeps it, and the Quincy fans say no. Well, just athletic skill kept that ball alive on the board. Bloom throws it out to half court. They use Hayes out there a lot. And he had a great super sectional game. 13 points, 6 out of 7 from the field with 12 boards. Brandon Cole can free himself. Holding foul on Derek Banta. Derek Banta, senior transfer from uh, Seymour Payson, or Payson Seymour this year. Done an outstanding job for uh, Coach Leggett and the Blue Devils. He had 31 against a team called Jacksonville. He, he, was, a, he was a town. Very good player. All tournament player at Collinsville. Uh, where Collinsville won, uh, where Quincy won that Collinsville tournament. Bloom sends another up. There's a tip out. Mark goal. Hampton, and look at him run. Lamar Rudd. He threw up a prayer. He did that simply to avoid the traveling, and it went in. <laughs> Hampton and Daniel exchange. Low block, wild pass, Quincy ball. Watch this prayer by Rudd. Yeah. Frank, he was avoiding the travel. He's out of control right here. He's about to lose it. He knows that, so he simply throws it up. Answered. There you go. Answered prayer. Wemhainer shakes it. There's your three back door. Special. And you notice how high they lay the layup up there. Used to having people dive at that ball upstairs to try to block it. Oh, by Banna. Quincy by three, 350, first quarter. Brandon Cole shakes to the left. Ha, yes. Brandon Cole. Brandon Cole moves stronger this year, a little bit more under control than as I remember him a year ago. He set the uh, assembly hall on its ear against Peoria Central with some 25-foot threes. Tim Johnson is wide open. Bloom sinks. Bloom is starting to sink in the man-to-man, -man, trying to uh, avoid being burnt by that back door. There's a lob coming. Tended for Webb Hader. And Bloom has it. Cole again. He turns away from the goal. Spots up a three. Running is Quincy. Banna with Rudd. Banna to the... And a foul. Mark Hampton picked it up. Both ball clubs are showing the uh, the desire to push the ball up the floor, yet both ball clubs are showing patience. They're not out of control. I'm impressed with Bloom. The last time Jerry Leggett and Quincy were here, they played the last game on Friday, and I don't think anybody forgot that game either. James Bailey, was that the one? That was Against the one. Emmanuel? 
free throw is missed by Banta, 72 percent. This is a pretty good foul shooting team. Wasn't that an undefeated manual team at that point? Yes, indeed. David Booth and company. Banta hit that one. And Quincy by two. Brandon Cole loves the three. And Bloom got here on the wings of Brandon Cole. Great pass to Daniel. And he's fouled by Tom Leffer. Brandon Cole with the behind the back pass just tried to sucker the Quincy defense. We were thinking they might be lulled to sleep there. Dana Parker, 24, is an excellent rebounder, 6'6 six, six and 170. Parker, the leading rebounder in all but one game this year for Bloom. Tom Lepper, the 6'8 uh, the sophomore for Quincy, look for him to get some bench time, and they'll come in with Welper, the 6'7 senior, who probably has a little bit more physical strength, but they've gotten a lot of mileage out of those two centers this year. Parker shoots for the tie. down now a whistle and a timeout on the court in a tie game in our fourth quarterfinal fair we'll be back in a moment now this message from one of your network sponsors true value hardware for great personal service and low everyday prices check the lineup at your neighborhood true value hardware store where the march true value of the month extra is the master mechanic 13 piece drill bit set race through projects with 13 high speed steel bits power driven with a split point that drills on contact in march get the master mechanic 13 piece drill bit set for just 5.99 where you see the banner at participating true value hardware stores and home center gleason we're up to your picturesque eyebrows in mail where did all this look at this stuff we got stuff from skokie from east chicago north chicago west chicago pilsen south chicago what's this all about Gleason, these are comments on those great commercials you've been doing for us. Let's do another one. You're the star of the commercials. Thank you, Gleason, but you're the star of the commercials. Thank you, Gleason. Brought to you by Gleason Chevy, Gleason's Golf Mill Ford, and Gleason Dodge Jeep Eagle. Quincy's record is 25 and 5. They lost to Rock Island twice. Dunbar, Peoria Central by one, and King by two at the Thanksgiving tournament at Quincy. Bloom has lost twice to Thorn Ridge, Thornton, and Eisenhower, and St. Joe, and vocational some good teams, too. These teams both play big schedules. I saw the Quincy game at Rock Island, and it was one of those strange games where neither team really could live up to their offensive expectations the Rockies defense won in the fourth quarter isn't that usually the case when those two teams get together there's so much pressure it seems like you saw the field goal percentage with Quincy in the lead 242 to go in the first quarter and you get a, a little flavor for what might be to come in this game check Bloom's defense appears that they may be in a zone defense this time down to 4-2-3 zone and this is what most coaches that have scouted and played Quincy think could be the most successful approach, the zone defense. Banna's on the baseline to Johnson. He steps in, is stripped by Parker, and out of bounds to Quincy. Look for a backdoor lob on this out-of-bounds play. Rudd kicks it out. Look for lob. Wemhainer lobs. Layup. Banna. Hello. Oh, look at the nice move to the baseline. And unfortunately for Bloom, Jeff Daniels stepped out of bounds as he came across. Frank Nardi out of Culver Stockton. Eight years at Bloom. 2-3 zone. Employed by, uh, by Bloom here. Webb Hainer can shoot that three, and it's a pass. This time, Banna. Rebound, Johnson, and a foul. That's a Quincy play. Sure, it's a Quincy play, and it's, it's, uh, it's a good one. You know, it's one that uh, you seemingly a fake shot. Here's Weemhainer with the ball out front. He doesn't shoot that far out. It's a fake shot. Hoping that Banner would catch and put it in just as a lot of one. With the purpose of getting the defensive man. Cole will attend to Paul. Average is 28.6. Again, now watch the backdoor play here uh, against the zone. They'll try to do something special, maybe a backdoor. Banna 
sets up outside. Wemhainer. Wemhainer's 34. Johnson fakes, goes downstairs. Banna steps in, has it blocked, and he is fouled. That's a very popular move against the zone defense, against a 2-3. Flash the low post man over to the strong side hold, try to punch it in. You'll notice here when Johnson is with the ball here on the, on the baseline, he's going to look for Banna who, who fills in the strong hold. Quincy right away struggling from the line, right? They are. A little over 67% foul shooting team, which is pretty good in high school. Pretty good, but there's four consecutive free throws missed, two by Banta and two by Johnson earlier. And Bloom will make you pay for that. Cole comes up. He dropped it, but Quincy touched it last. Quincy has some good size. But this year, so does Bloom. Quincy's out of their zone into a man-to-man -man defense and a deny situation. They're not guarding the man throwing it in. Parker just barely kept it in bounds. Dana Parker's got the long arm. Wing left. Jay. Not there. Tip out for Quincy. It's Johnson. Nice play by Hampton. Anticipated it. Back the other way. Stop and pop. Mark Hampton missed. Wem Hayner got it. Cole fouled him. Quincy does that oftentimes on an, on an inbounds play by their opponent. Take a man for man, deny him the ball, and then swing right now into their zone defense, which they did. Terry Leggett just had a talk with Tim Johnson, and he said, do not, do not throw that half-court pass if the tip pass doesn't work because it's already broken down. The play was broken down, and Bloom was back there waiting for it. You don't like to outlet the ball, so to speak, to the middle of the floor. Wim Hainer makes the free throw. He played in this tournament in 87 as a freshman. He's been a solid, steady leader for the Blue Devils for the last couple of years, Frank. Get 20 points and four steals in their super sectional upset of Peoria Manuel. And Quincy reclaims the lead, 35 seconds, opening quarter. This is Cole out front. Parker's at the high post. Quincy's got the ball. Jerry Liggett tapped himself on the head. I'm sure they're going to go one, one shot here with 15 seconds left. Good first quarter of play. One of these teams will meet Gordon Tech. Look for Banta. Look for Banta. In it goes. Banta on a turn. Wings it up. No. Rebound is down, and that's the end of the first quarter in the Assembly Hall. With Quincy in the lead over Bloom by one. Now this from one of your network sponsors, Country Company. Well, we'd been ahead the entire ball game. Kalen made a rally. They got close to us. We had an out-of-bounds play on the sideline. Danny made eye contact with me. We had played together since the third grade, so I knew he was going to break for the basket. I threw him the ball. He scored the basket. We went on to win the game. Fred Browning, 1973 Class A MVP for Ridgeway, and his fellow country company's agents salute this week's players. You know, we felt we weren't just playing for ourselves. We were playing for the entire southeastern Illinois. from the Trib, Preps Plus, big league coverage of your community. A confident All-State first-teamer, Brandon Cole. Check him out there, Coach. Well, as we commented, he's more confident, as you stated, and he's more under control. He can certainly pull up with the three. Once he's uh, gone inside a little bit more in this first quarter than has uh, Bloom. Bloom's lived outside more uh, more often, and that might be the, a big difference in this ball game if they continue to go that way, Frank. There's your field goal shooting, and Quincy has six fewer shots, one more basket. And those shots have come inside a little bit more. Uh, Welpers now replaced Leper in the Quincy lineup. First two, Jeff Daniel gives Bloom the lead. As we start the second quarter, 
Daniel, a 6'1 junior, at 31 against Bloom Trail. He can fill it up. Bloom's back to the man-to-man -man defense. Inside it goes. Turn around, one-hander is down by Wilfer. Wilfer's the senior center. Wilfer. Cole backs up into three-point land, guarded by Wemhainer. Cole, without thinking, just slips the ball inside Parker, and he turns and got the foul. The foul was picked up by Tim Johnson. Looks like it wanted to travel on that uh, on that play. Drop step, maybe got a little bit by with a little bit of a shuffle. Bloom hasn't been to the free throw line with the frequency that uh, Quincy has been. Parker, 6'6 and 170. He's a senior. Quincy has taken the ball to the basket a little more than Bloom, and that usually Wemhainer looks in. Johnson comes out, and Quincy runs the offense. Cole, tough D by Brandon Cole. He's got his hand on it, yelling at the official for over and back. Now it was a loose ball after, after Brandon had deflected the ball. It became a loose ball in that situation. That's uncharacteristic loose of Quincy. Ball. Yes, it is. That's uh, a turnover they usually don't make. 6.22 to go in the half, and Jerry Leggett is not the happiest guy in the building at the moment. Well, interestingly enough, they didn't run the specials that time down the floor, but got into a continuity against the man-to-man uh, -man defense uh, by Blue. Cole comes right this time. Slips into the lane. Back out to Daniel. Blue showing some patience. Parker gets free. Finger roll. Solid rebound. Banta plays big. Nice pass. Easy layup for Wilfer. Block count back. Did it get up there? Don't believe it did. Maybe a replay will show that it did. It's got to be above it. It's a fine pass. Yes, it was. That's Chris Wilfer. I believe it was coming down after being in the throw to the rim. Well, it never got above the no. cylinder on its own, but I, I think they may have called the guy for batting the glass. Shot by Parker's too long, but Bloom keeps it as Hampton holds it. Look at that skip pass over the zone. Here's your three. Two pops in a row by Parker and Daniel. And now Daniel again. Three misses. Out of bounds to Quincy. Bloom is really going to their offensive board and going there strong. I think they had a case for an over and back or uh, over the back a while ago by Banta. Didn't get the call. Look for a special this time down the floor, uh, Frank. Continuity didn't work the last time. Patience and movement equals basket. And a foul on Kalen Hayes. As Banna came to the left baseline, and Hayes went out and got him. 6'8", Hayes. A little too anxious. Well, you know, you can go up and, and uh, extend those arms, but you get in trouble when you want to bring them down and smack the ball. That's usually when the officials toot the whistle and call the foul ball. Or Bloom. Caitlin Hayes will get a rest. And Joe Barner, the 6'4 senior, comes back. Derek Vanna is one of four senior starters. Barner brings a little physicalness to the game when he enters. 195 pounds, 6'4". You weigh 195 in high school? Oh, no. <laughs> 155. <laughs> That's about right. Cole bounces. A lot of spring. He exchanges in and out. Barner has it poked away nicely by Chris Wilfer, and he's been a lift off the bench. Yeah, he's done, an, he's done an outstanding job for Quincy this year. He's been their starting center most of the year. He just recently shared that spot with Leper. 6'7 and 210 is Wilfer. Cole will have it. A little hurried shot by Cole that time. If you're a Quincy fan, you got to be feeling good because they've made some mistakes here, unlike Quincy mistakes, and they're still ahead by two. You also have to feel good, uh, Jim, because uh, Bloom is not looking for in to establish any offense inside. Johnson steps in, got it up, and he's fouled. It would have counted. Barner got it. See, that's inside offense right there. Bloom's coming down and shooting the perimeter shot. Solely. That was the backdoor alley oop play. A little bit missed time because he wasn't able to get into his leap and he had to come back down with it. Gets the man to man defense, the pick on Johnson's man. He comes back, door, fakes, gets his man up, then goes up and finishes it off looking for the uh, for the basket, knowing that uh, he's already got the foul. Yeah. 
Johnson puts it down, and Lamar Rudd goes to the whip. Yeah, he just kept kind of napping here. I think yeah, they were looking for a pass, and he just took it to the basket. Johnson rolled in a pair. He forgot his uniform in the Super. He remembered everything else they taught him all those years. But <laughs> a Quincy lead of four. Hampton's outside. He's not bashful. Rebound Johnson. The Blue Devils come to the hunt. Wemhainer looks inside. Quincy's on the perimeter. Johnson steps in, puts a two. Inside again. Give and go. Oldest play maybe in the book. And one of the toughest to defend. Someone once said the most dangerous person on the floor is that, is that guy to just pass the ball if he's cutting to the basket. Dana Parker, 6-6, wing left. Brandon Cole. At 45 against Thornwood like that. From way out there, missed it. Hampton couldn't save it. He went into the Rock Island band. We don't want to harp on this, Frank, but uh, you're outside solely with your offense uh, with Bloom. If you're a Bloom fan, you've got to be concerned that it's, it's too much outside. The game can get away from you out there. You've got to establish some offense inside. And they've got Parker at 6'6", Hayes at 6'8", and Barner at 6'4". Good baseline size. Great defensive effort by Daniel. The ball hits the deck. And it will be the possession error. Decided. Now we have 2.46 to go and a timeout on the court with Quincy in the lead in the second quarter. Let's pause for this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. What's the other way to beat the evening rush? Hmm. The other satisfying working lunch. Also a good meal. The other way to get into that little black dress. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. Is your old car worth $2,000 in trade on a new Honda Civic? Then get Rormanized for only $64.89 or $146 a month, and that new Civic is yours. I'm Bob Roman from Schomburg Honda, the Midwest's largest Honda dealer with the first Honda invoice sale. That's right, Honda's an invoice. So you can get a new Honda Civic for as low as $64.89 or $146 a month. $64.89 or $146 a month. It's the Midwest first Honda invoice sale, only at Bob Rohrman and Schomburg Honda Golf in Plum Grove. Sale in Saturday. Basketball for brunch on Saturday. East St. Louis Lincoln's rematch in the semifinal against unbeaten Chicago King comes first, followed by Gordon Tech and the winner of this game in what could be you talk about those four teams, whoever wins this game, that's power. That is power. And, of course, a lot of people uh, look at the Lincoln-King matchup as being the championship game. But I tell you what, I was so impressed with the Gordon Tech ball club. And either one of these ball clubs could be a, a great opponent for a championship game. But he runs a sidelines play, and Webb Hainer gets a layup 35 feet from the basket. Well, that's that special move again. You know, you're always looking, uh, Coach Leggett's teams are always looking to score off of dead ball situations, inbound situations. Brandon Cole is three out of nine from three-point range, and you'll expect he'll shoot him better than that because on the season, he's 40%. Inside, Barner with a nice, strong move. you have to have right there. You know, you, you, that, that will loosen up and give you the outside game. It brings you right back into uh, six points down, and you've established some offense inside. Barner gets Bloom back within six. Quincy now shows patience. They try to come to the high post. Brandon pulls ahead of the pack. Yes, sir. That's about Brandon Cole. You need some of those transition baskets, some of those turnover baskets off of turnovers. Now Rudd works against Jeff Daniel. Bloom tries to put pressure on the point. Lob inside. Tim Johnson doesn't have it. Turns. He just planted, took his time, squared up, knocked it in. Very strong ball player. Banta tried to pick it off, and now Quincy does have it. And Quincy's fans come to their feet in the assembly hall. A sea of blue. And even if Quincy's ball players have slow feet, their teams always have quick hands. Wemhainer flashes the post. Wilbur comes out. 
Clemhater at 6-5. Plays outside a lot. Now Quincy with 1.05 to go in the half. They're just trying for a high percentage shot. Running their offense. They would have a tough offense against the man-to-man. -man. They get a lot of good shots. Johnson. Coming out of stack on the bottom. Strud flashes. Now Banner. They may go for one. Oh, I don't think there's any question. Unless they get unless uh, Bloom's defense breaks down earlier and gives them a layup shot. Wilfer. Ooh, nice catch by Wemhanner. Well, Wemhanner is an all-state soccer player. Outstanding two sport athlete. Tremendous soccer player. Now we're down. As you see the clock, right-hand corner of your screen, under 10. Wemhainer wants to go. Rudd posts up. Johnson moves, shoots a bad angle shot that will not go. Brandon Cole, less than a second. Is it good? No. At the end of the first half, Quincy in the lead. 29 to 23. We'll be back in just a moment. Let's pause for these messages. David Bruce used cars, otherwise known as cream puffs, have become very popular. It's probably because of our variety, from import to domestic, economy to luxury. It could be the hundreds of used cars, trucks, and vans we have to choose from. Or maybe it's our sweet deals. Whatever it is, the Kankakee area has developed such an appetite for them, we've doubled our used car inventory. David Bruce used cars, 555 Latham Drive in Urban A. Because nothing is more touching, more exciting, more shocking, more dramatic than real life. Here's the real... Brought to you by the country companies. When it matters most, the country's behind you. Now let's go to the floor, Art Kimball. Our guest is Dick Van Sayoc, the veteran head basketball coach of Peoria Emanuel. And Dick, you and I were just uh, kind of lamenting what happened to you Tuesday night. You lose a one-pointer to this very fine Quincy ball club. That's the bad news, but the good news, you got everybody back. Well, I know I have some uh, young men sitting home and running around uh, the assembly hall here, and they're feeling pretty bad right now. I can pretty sure of that. Okay, you've been in this business 41 years. It's not the first heartbreaker you've lost. You lost the heartbreakers down here in the assembly hall. It never feels any better, does it? No, they don't get easy, uh, that's for sure. And it takes a couple of days, and when I know uh, we feel pretty bad, but just think how, how it is on the uh, players that we have. Uh, yeah, no doubt. How do you evaluate the tournament thus far on what you've seen, Dick? You've seen a million of these? It looks to me like the crowd's a lot better this year. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that the uh, assembly hall has got a good crowd this afternoon. It looks like a good crowd tonight. That's a plus. Is King unbeatable? They look like a college team. Yeah. They have good big personnel. and I didn't know their bench was as big and as strong as it is, and they look awfully tough to me. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Amy East St. Louis Lincoln, and uh, Benny Lewis is pretty drafty over there. <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's amazing that those fellas uh, wind up like this each year. East St. Louis uh, did an excellent job uh, this afternoon, and of course, uh, uh, West Aurora may come back yep. and uh, gave King a ball game, and, and I was glad to see that. Dick, how do you like the way Quincy's playing right now? They're playing awfully well. Yep. And uh, of course, if uh, Brandon he gets, gets hot and uh, those uh, three pointers start falling, <laughs> Uh, they're in good shape, but uh, if they don't, Quincy takes pretty good care of the basketball, and uh, six points is a big lead for Quincy. You had an interesting thought on the three-point shot. Uh, it's a good-bad syndrome, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you never know where that rebound's going either when you take those uh, three-pointers like that, and uh, 
Brandon's a, a great three-point shooter, but they got to go in, and if you, if you live by uh, by that shot, uh, you also die by it, too. How about rolling medals, Mike Lipnitsky? He put on quite a show, didn't he? He had everybody in the assembly hall talking. Uh, I guess he's already signed, and half a dozen people around me were saying uh, that if he had to sign, uh, people would be calling all over him right now. Well, that's right. He signed with Jim Molinari up in Northern. I know Jim probably uh, will tell you that's his best recruiting move ever. He's in his first year as a head college coach. Well, he's going to make him a great player, that's for sure. Well, Dick, congratulations on a great year. And uh, again, our condolences on the heartbreaking loss, but you lost to a fine Quincy team. And uh, we'll see all your kids next year. Well, I, I hope that they decide that they want to come down here and try it because uh, they're all back and they're a great group of young men. And I've really been proud of them. Well, you have reason to be. Dick, thank you so much. My pleasure, Art. Believe me. Dick Van Syok, head coach of Peoria Man, who's only been in the coaching business 41 very successful years. Back with more, but first, this from the IHSA. This is Jackson with three. Jackson lets fly. Go! Jackson won the game! Who will be state champion for 63? Pass into Williams. Tries to drop it away. The ball is stolen by Smedley. He shoots. He scores! Up quickly, right corner to Horton. Horton launches the jumper. No good. Rebound. Gamble is it! It's March Madness. Now, relive the incredible history of the Illinois High School Basketball Tournament on one fabulous cassette. Meet the great players and coaches. See the unforgettable teams, the powerhouses, and the sentimental favorites. The wild finishes, the classic thrillers. March Madness, now yours. Just send check or money order for $32.95 to this address or call toll-free 1-800-621-0660. That's 1-800-621-0660. Major credit cards accepted. Order now. At the Assembly Hall, there's Quincy's lead at halftime in the quarterfinal fourth game over Chicago Heights Bloom. And Jerry Leggett is talking to the Blue Devils now in the locker room. Jerry went to Moline High School, and under his picture in the yearbook, it says he thinks like a philosopher and he acts like a king. Jerry Leggett still enjoying a moment in the sun in his last year at uh, Quincy. And you've had an opportunity to play against him over the years. Uh, tell us just a little bit well, about the guy. For the last 13 years, we've had that opportunity at, at Jacksonville to do that. And his teams are always well coached. Uh, Jerry Leggett is one of the finest preparatory coaches that I've seen in the business. Offensively, I think that's his strong suit. He has much imagination on offense. Defensively, he stays pretty basic with his 1-2-2 two, two tipping zone. But he's always looking for opportunities to surprise you on offense. How about uh, Frank Nardi in his second year in a row coming down here? Some coaches try a lifetime to get here. Here's a guy, two in a row. Yeah, two in a row, and, he, and he's been led by Brandon Cole, an outstanding uh, perimeter ball player. Brandon's much stronger this year. But nonetheless, they still need to establish an inside game, Frank, if they're going to do any damage with Quincy. Let's take a look at some of the numbers in this first half of play. As you see, Bloom has 29 shots, 10 more than Quincy. But look at the shooting percentage difference. Big shooting percentage difference, and uh, the board difference, Quincy has it there. Free throw situation. Uh, Quincy's turnover surprised me in this ball game, having seven. That's uncharacteristic uh, of a legged coach ball club. On the scoreboard, Quincy has some balance, as Derek Banta leads with seven, but Johnson Rudd and Wemhainer have six apiece, and Quincy can hurt you a lot of ways. They hurt you a lot of ways, again, uh, with the special plays, and they can't get into their continuity game and uh, take a lot of time off the clock. They're a well-coached offensive ball club. Brandon Cole, he Brandon. is a thoroughbred. Oh, he's an outstanding ball player. He's a great athlete, and, uh, of course, he draws much of the defensive attention uh, from Quincy. Cole will be one of the focuses now with Parker and Daniel to bring Bloom back. How will Bloom change their game plan here in the second half? Well, I, I really think they need to go to more of a, a, a zone defense. Uh, stay away from the man-to-man -man as long as they can. I think they really, they really need to do is on the offensive end establish an inside game so it will complement Brandon's outside game. You can't live on the perimeter uh, solely against the Quincy ball club. The word special we've used a lot of times for Quincy and the sideline special is one of the things that Jerry Leggett has in his book. Many coaches just want to get the ball in bounds. Coach Leggett is looking to score quickly, so the backdoor lob catches uh, the defense from uh, Blo uh, Bloom off uh, guard and by surprise. And now you'll see Rudd. Look at this. 
and Brandon Cole will answer. They were looking for a backdoor tip to, to Johnson and then backdoor, and here comes Cole with the steal. Takes it up very strong, gets up high, and in. It's quite a name in this tournament. J.B. Brandon for King and Brandon Cole for Bloom, two first-team All-State performers. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. Let's take time for this from one of your network sponsors, True Value Hardware. For great person. With 6.57 to go in the second quarter, Quincy down by four. They went on a 12-point run, and that's also one of the characteristics of both of these teams. They're explosive. They can score points in a hurry. You know, the good teams can uh, score points in bunches, as they say, and Quincy has always been able to do that uh, throughout the season. Well, you can be sure that uh, Brandon Cole will have his guns out and firing, and I think you'll see more production out of him even than the 13 he got in the second half. He's capable of big numbers. I'm sure, and I think the main thing is uh, Coach Nardi wants his ball club to, uh, to play with confidence and, and to maybe take it inside a little bit. Don't become impatient. Don't become uh, hurried. You know, be quick, but don't hurry. A lot of time, only a six-point difference. All right, we start the second half. Bloom in white has the ball. Quincy in blue has the lead by six. Box and one, it looks like, right away there. Kalen Hayes is inside. Right off the bat, Bloom went to the boxes with their first play. Is that an omen? Yeah, they, they went inside looking to, looking to score inside. Establish something inside first. A little drop down to Tim Johnson. Little drop step to the basket, and he's held. We'll have to check this uh, uh, Quincy defense out next time down the floor. They usually don't go box in one, but it, uh, but it looked like that time they may have been the first first thing out of the hat. How often do, do coaches set up their first offensive play after a quarter or a half? Oftentimes you do that. You know, it's a, uh, almost a given. Quincy has Wemhainer and Rudd outside. Rudd steps in. He got in too tight. And Bloom has the ball. Brandon Cole tries to eat into the lead. He dances the ball behind his back and through his leg. Whips the ball inside. Daniel threw it up there and a whistle. Take a look at this again. All right, good defense overplay by Tim Johnson. He deflected the ball. Of course, it ended up in the hands of uh, number 22, who's that uh, Daniel. And Daniel split down, used his left hand nicely. He just didn't get it to fall, but he was fouled. Johnson's defense was good, simply wasn't rewarded. Daniel's free throw is in. East St. Louis Lincoln and King play in the first semifinal tomorrow. King has dry clean most of the field all year. He's had a couple of close games. Gordon Tech, with only one loss, will meet the winner of this one. And Frank, if Quincy does win this game, they will own the state record for finishing most times in the final four at 12. He won three one, sagging one three one zone defense this time down the floor. Bloom has it for Cole for Bloom, and here's a nice layup. Brandon Cole found Daniel. And Jeff Daniel just walked in for the deuce and got fouled. Big, big bucket, nice transition bucket. You gotta, gotta get some easy baskets in this game of basketball to be successful. And here's one that Bloom's getting right now. Jerry Leggett just pointed to his head, said to his players, think, play smart. Well, that's tough to defend right there with that quickness out that Bloom, Bloom had. Notice Bloom's defense. It was a 1-3-1 one, one sagging type of defense. Quincy will try to attack it from the baseline out, which means the initial pass will go to the baseline. Then they'll try to attack from there. Bloom has outscored Quincy. Five zip here in the third. Here's that pass out inside. Beautiful. Inside back out to the driving web hater for the layup. Gorgeous play. Baseline out. Cole missed the three. You know, and the key to that pass is to make it look like it's going out of bounds, and it kind of freezes everybody. They think, oh, bad pass, when the guy's cutting down the lane. Remember the length of the court toss. Douglas to Douglas to the basket. Rudd. Yes. They get in trouble, and they score two quick ones. Lamar Rudd, the 5'11 senior, knocked that one in. He may not take another jump shot the rest of the game. Parker and Wemhainer collided. Daniel shoots. Parker tipped it in. 
Lamar Rudd, four out of four from the field in this game, has given Quincy a big boost. That includes that acrobatic diving shot he threw in. I think this is a good call by Bloom. I like this approach. Uh, if you're a Bloom uh, fan, to, to go to the zone defense, they're just going to have to now be careful as Quincy tries to attack coming off the baseline. Banna steps in, flips it up underhanded, won't go. Remember, Wilfer is in at center, not Leper. Webb Painter, too long. Rudd got by with a foul there, undercut. And now, Quincy reloads. Skip pass, Brandon Cole picked it off. Great anticipation by Cole. Quincy by three, a three-point attempt. He overshot everything. Too soon. Daniel wasn't ready. Vanna tries to answer. Wilfer sets the post. Quincy sets up double high post they exchange. Under five minutes, third quarter. The Blue Devils trying to win their 26th game. Bloom trying to hold them off and win their 22nd. Inside Johnson, it rolled in. Good strong post play. There's that inside offensive game that one must establish if you're going to be successful. Hampton gives it up to Parker. Long rebound on a long shot and a foul on the Trojans. You know, about the, the, the difference in the last minute and a half, uh, Frank, I think, has been the patience offensively of Quincy down here to get what they want. A little bit of impatience down here on the part of Bloom and coming up with an empty bucket. Frank Nardi is going to get three reserves into the game. 32 is Maurice James. 44 is Joe Barner. And 42, Robert Barnes. It's an interesting move. They join Cole and Hampton. Took out the baseline. Blue picks one off. Barnes. Ted Meyer checks in for Quincy, a 6-1 senior. Todd Wemhainer. Sits down. Cole, an 80% free throw shooter. He's a package. 6'1, 160, drops them both. A two point game on our hands again. The Trojans. Edge back. They were six down at the half. Bloom's bringing the pressure defense out just a little bit. It's a 1 2 2 half court trap now, as opposed to the 1 3 1. Banna comes to Wilper in the corner. Meyer has replaced Webb Hainer, but already Todd's back up off the pine. If you play this 1 2 2 defense, you have to really protect the middle, Frank. Jerry Leggett says timeout. Timeout with 3.09 to play in the third. We'll come back at the Assembly Hall in a tight one. Let's pause for these messages. Sawmill Creations, located at 110 West Broadway in Bradley at the Viaduct. For that distinctive gift, consider these cypress clocks, decorative plaques, rocker animals, Authentic pennant clocks to show pride in your team or school. Priced at $65 plus tax. To order, call 815-939-7044. Write or stop in. We'll be glad to serve you. Seven in their first effort, and they went on 
a couple of tough teams there in tight games. Well, uh, the, the Grange game was really a tough one for them. That Quincy game, they hit a free throw with six seconds left to take the lead, and then Manuel missed a one and one with no time left on right. the clock. Quincy with the ball and the lead by a deuce. Lamar Rudd, who's had a good game, tries for that one. He missed the works. Inside, Quincy rebounds and scores. Tim Johnson. Rudd was so wide open, he didn't realize he could have gone to the glass himself. Two more dribbles or one more, and he was there. Johnson's caught with some big baskets. Farner, a little out of position, way away from the goal. They find Cole. You can be sure Cole's going to take most of the shots with this group on the floor, and Cole fires it down. And Rudd is talking him all over the floor, that particular possession. Stewart. Let's see, it's Robert Barnes, Joe Barner. It's a triangle on two defense. It's a triangle and two defense on uh, on Quincy. Weem Hayner and Banta are being guarded man for man, and there's a triangle set with the other three bloom ball players. Check it out. Nice. Nice defensive work there by the Trojans. And now they shoot for the tie. You gotta like the coach that shows a little imagination, and Frank Nardi's showing some right now. Barnes gives to Hampton and Mark Hampton. And on the other end, Frank, you got the man-to-man -man on Cole all over the floor by Rudd. Here comes Cole, a breeze too long. Maurice James had the rebound and a foul on the Blue Devil. He turned himself out of that basket, I believe. James, six foot senior. He's only a 50% foul shooter, doesn't play a lot. Look at Jerry Leggett checking the card there. Usually he gets a uh, jump defense, as they call it, a triangle and two, a box and one. Most coaches will go ahead and run their regular continuity offense. Check it the next time down the floor. Jeff Daniels returns for Bloom. Now Parker does too. Our colleague uh, over here called this. Uh, Coach Nardi made a statement to many uh, three of his starters, and uh, now see if he can get some response bringing them back in the ball game. He made a statement by not making a statement <laughs> when they came out. Free throw, James is down. If he does it again, the game is tied deep into the third quarter. Quincy is well aware it's a triangle to man to man on Banta and Weenhainer. And the other three green ball players are in the triangle zone. Check it out and see how they'll approach it. All knotted up here. Quincy calls the play. Webhainer comes out to the top of the key. Turns and fires. Too long. He's not had one of his good games. The ball's on the deck. Quincy has it. Rudd is fouled. Great hustle. Great hustle by both ball clubs. Quincy was just there ahead of time. Uh, Rudd was and then got fouled. That time they... Check it out here, loose ball, great hustle. Both ball players dive with the ball. Rudd cut off uh, the baseline, got foul. Watch the play. It's into Wilfer. Wilfer at 6'7. Johnson at 6'5 and Wemhainer at 6'5 for Quincy. One of the better sized Blue Double team since the Michael Payne club. Triangle two. Rudd again. Way short. And now Bloom the ball. And Cole in transition to Jeff Daniels. Bloom may spread it here. Try to get a little bit of momentum going into the fourth quarter. Try to get the last shot. Four corners. And Quincy will come out. Play man. Forty-five seconds. Third quarter. It's tied. Bloom is in the bonus. Quincy is not. Rudd following Cole around the court as Wemhainer picks up the foul. Wemhainer's being recruited by Illinois State, by St. Louis, any number of teams. You haven't seen his true season-long performance here tonight. Imagine he has a decision to make, too. Does he want to play uh, soccer? Does he want to play basketball? Because he is an outstanding soccer player. Jeff Daniel. <laughs> Missed. 
free throws. It comes down to defense and free throws so often. Quincy will now see if they can take the lead back. And trying to two, the other kids are going to have to pick up the scoring far points. The other kids meaning a, a Rudd, for example, a Tim Johnson. Nine, eight, Rudd, six. Johnson, four, three, Rudd. Johnson, one, he shoots, no. The third quarter is in the book, and in that quarter, Bloom outscored the Blue Devils 16 to 10. The goal from a halftime deficit of six to a tie, and coach, here we are. Well, it's a good move on Coach Nardi's part going to the uh, Triangle 2 defense. I think that's put some pressure on Lamar Rudd and Tim Johnson to do some perimeter shooting of their own and taking the ball out of the hands of the likes of Todd Wehainer and Derek Banta. All boils down to eight minutes, Frank. And both schools' crowds are on their feet. Quincy leads the rebounding battle by nine. Webhainer a three. Short. Rudd rebounds. Quincy keeps it. Looks like uh, Jerry Liggett might have tried to get Todd Wenhainer off the track there. Right away. Right away. With a special out of bounds. Coach Leggett has been unhappy a lot of the game. Wenhainer steps in. Great pass to Leper, who is fouled. Lepper might have gotten away with a walk as he went oh, to the goal. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. He, he, didn't, he did not have control of the basketball, but he was still traveling. You cannot air dribble like this. This is a travel here. Watch a nice dump pass by Todd Wienhainer. And out of control, he didn't pick it up here. Check this. Bloom, nearly perfect at the line. Quincy only shooting just over 50%. That's a situation Bloom needs to go to the line more often. The sophomore gave Quincy the lead. Tom Lepper, 6'8", 205, he's 16 years old. Imagine Warren Wallace, who's Quincy's coach next year, is licking his chops in the stands. Jeff Daniel now, as Bloom tries to answer the Quincy two. Cole, three. Rebound, James inside, puts it up and in. Maurice James giving Bloom a lift off the bench. Cole nearly got that one. Rudd will be open also if he moves slightly off the point, Frank. Cole is really quick. Webhainer is double teamed down low. Tries to pop out. Webhainer needs to make one or two for his confidence. Whistle. Timeout. Quincy. 5.54 to play. We're in a tie. We'll be back. Now this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. What's the other reason for chopsticks? The other light, late night bite. It's been a minute, hey? The other fast family favorite. The other romance and candlelight. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. Plus, bigly coverage of your community. Yeah, Dana Parker, 24. Chicago Heights Blooms Trojans get the tie back as 6'6 Dana Parker gets inside. He gets a rebound, Frank, keeps it alive, goes up, makes a difficult shot to keep it to not the game. All calls the play, crossed his arms. Bounce pass to the box. Inside Banna, fake, puts it up and short, but he's got fouled. Jeff Daniel, that would have been a made-to-order three. Sure would have. Uh, Jerry's in, a, in his uh, offenses. Uh, 
okay? He was spreading the floor, all right? Now they're going to attack the ball by getting the strong side hold, then back to the weak side. Kind of a spread type of offense, a little baseline flashing offense, if you will. But he's spreading the defense. That's why he called the timeout. There's Quincy's lead, 5-0-1 to go in the game. Derek Banna drilled a pair. Quincy's last four points have come on free throws. Brandon Cole with 20 points in the game, the leading scorer in the game. Out top. Foul on Webb Hainer. Weem Hainer is in their 1-2-2 uh, zone defense. Weem Hainer has turned around facing Brandon Cole man-to-man -man on his side. He's just a little over-anxious there reach, with a reach-in foul. For Bloom, Mark Hampton returns for Maurice James. James getting a lot of credit over there on the bench, and he deserved it. He gave him a lift. Did a nice job for him. And he's probably going to see more of this ballgame. Everything gets overstated. Look at the coaches. <laughs> the emotions. Free throws as uh, often in these games play a big role. Right now they're matching one another at the free throw line. Great pressure shooter. I have to point out that's not a towel that Jerry stole from the hotel either. That's <laughs> his. Baseline, nice move. Kevin Bybee just comes into the game and knocks in a 10-footer. Quincy by two. Youngster played a lot, would have played a lot this year. Plants fires three. Brandon Cole whips Bloom into the lead. Well, I sort of say Bybee would have started for them had Derek Banner not transferred in. So uh, Bybee's a, a, a key player. And now Bloom wants timeout with a one-point lead, 4.33 to go. We'll be back. Let's pause for these messages. David Bruce used cars, otherwise known as cream puffs, have become very popular. It's probably because of our variety, from import to domestic, economy to luxury. It could be the hundreds of used cars, trucks, and vans we have to choose from. Or maybe it's our sweet deals. Whatever it is, the Kankakee area has developed such an appetite for them, we've doubled our used car inventory. David Bruce used cars, 555 Latham Drive in Burbank. Larry King Live is provocative. A great pair of underwear on, too. No, 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 no. You never know who his guest will be. Every time I come on your show, I sell a lot of books. Oh, what they might get into. Kimberly, if Hef asked you right now, would you say yes? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I love this hot pitch. Larry King, it's live and lively, and it's only on CNN. Weeknights at 9 Eastern. This one is going to take his team from two down to one up. He just pulls up a good 22 feet out and buries the three. Somebody said he's a better shooter than Marshall Dillon. <laughs> he's well, something. Three-point shooting. Quincy 0 for 2 in the game. Bloom 5 for 15. Cole is 5 for 14 of those himself. He has 25. The fans for both schools give the clubs a deserving tribute there. A lot of time left in this ball game. Just about four and a half minutes to play. Quincy tries to recapture the lead. Webb Hainer back to the triangle two by Bloom. This is by the again. It is short. And Dana Parker has the board. That may well be why Bybee came in to take that shot out there. Daniel came down, looked like he wanted to penetrate, and brought it back outside. And now let's see if the Trojans change their style with the lead late. They were picking and hawking in a box and one all over the floor. Banta right now has uh, Brandon Poe. Now it looks like Quincy's going to match up and take him man for man. Banta crowds Cole. And it is man to man. Cole goes by his man on the right, gives inside to Barner, and he's got a layup. Bloom leads by three. The straight man-to-man -man is not one of Quincy's favorite tools. Rudd comes up ahead. Now let's see if Quincy can answer. Bybee spots up. It's a three. Oh, it rattled out. 
<laughs> Good rebound by Johnson. He's pinned in. Bybee tries again. Rattled out again. Tough break for Bybee. Well, Jerry Leggett's going with Bybee because Bybee is a pure shooter. He is an excellent shooter. And now Bloom with a chance to increase their lead. How's when you look for Bloom with, without being too uh, cautious? You want, if you're a Bloom fan, you want them to become a little bit patient. Once again, Chicago Heights Bloom calls timeout. They have the lead. We've got 3.03 to play. We're back after this from one of your network sponsors, True Value Hardware. In these days of self-serve gas stations, computerized banking, and understaffed stores, it seems that no one has the time for personal service anymore. Well, at True Value Hardware stores, we haven't forgotten that we're working for you. And whenever you have a question or a problem with a do-it-yourself project, we'll do our very best to help. So the next time someone wonders where personal service has gone, you tell them it's still hard at work. Right in here. So make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. Sports Channel's coverage of the IHSA, Class A, and AA State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by the Chicago Tribune. Get big league coverage of your community in the new Preps Plus section. High school sports and more every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Chicago Tribune. And by the Jerry Gleason All-American Automotive Group. You're never more than minutes away from the best car deal in town with Gleason. Side is the assembly hall in Champaign-Urbana. Three minutes and three seconds to go in the fourth quarter with Bloom leading Quincy, and you see that 20,559 people have paid their way through the gates here today, counting 11,210 this evening session. And some fine ball games today too, Frank. Of course, right now it's a, it's a big ball game for one of these for one of these ball clubs. They're going to go home, and uh, they don't want in that season. Right now, Bloom has the lead and the ball. Still anybody's game. And we're 3 3 away from the end of regulation in this one. Brandon Cole comes outside for Bloom, and he's the trigger man. Bloom wants to spread the floor. Be patient, but don't forget to attack the basket. Hampton penetrates. Barner could catch up with it. Quincy has the ball. Well, you had two players each thinking the other one was going to get the basketball. Exactly, exactly. Good penetration, baseline bounce pass between two players. Each of them looking for the other one at spirit. All right, let's check the defense this time. Triangle two. Nardi stayed with it most of the second half. Ted Meyer in for Quincy is 10. Johnson. Oh, pass is intended for Rudd, and Rudd had to commit the foul trying to get it. Big play, big play. He was sealed out. Uh, you know, Cole did an excellent job. He knew he had the interception. Watch, he knows he has the interception here, Frank, and he, and he placed himself in such a manner he knows Rudd's going to come over his back. Turned his body back into him. You know, we talk about the triangle, too, at the defensive end. They've had a man-for-man -man on Weemhainer and on Banta most of the second half with the other three playing a zone defense, they being Bloom. Big free throws, Frank. It's one thing to get somebody to the foul line. It's another thing when it's cold. 80%, and it's down. He's got 26 of Bloom's 51. A lot of coaches like to go to a triangle too late in the ball game to defend the three-point shot. And that's why Bybee, who has been in the ball game, because they feel that he can shoot it. Of course, now he's out. Cole rolled that one off. Quincy's down by four. Clock will become a factor soon. My line against the Quincy ball, but you best make the free throws. Barner, less than 50% on the year from the free throw line. He's gonna shoot these left-handed. Quincy has the ball on the miss. Todd Wemhainer hurries it up. Who will take the shot for Quincy here? Banna looks for Wemhainer. Johnson's open, no. Inside Meyer, missed. Rebound Banna, 
won't go. Rudd's got this one. Steps in, rejected by Barner. Picked up by Quincy. 147 left. Quincy four down with the ball. Wild pass. They save it. Rudd a fine athletic play. Great athletic play by, by uh, Lamar Rudd. Excellent. Johnson's wide open. A minute and a half in this game. LeBloom leads. He's passing up some shots, even Webhainer. Johnson sets the post. Quincy needs a timeout and get it. 121 to play. We'll come back with a conclusion in a moment. Timeout now from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. What's the other way to beat the evening rush? Hmm. The others satisfied working lunch. Those look good to me. The other way to get into that little black dress. What is this other tempting food for thought? It's the other white meat, none other than pork. For about $2 million, you can get a lawnmower built like a John Deere. Or one as powerful for around $100,000. Or some things that trim like a deer for about $8,000. But why would you do that when for less than $2,000, you can get a genuine John Deere? The John Deere STX. Nothing runs like a deer. With 1.21 to go, it's time for coaching decisions. Who will take the shot? Will it be Derek Banta, 60% from the field? Or Todd Wemhainer, 54% is two choices. But Wemhainer, with 54% on the season, is but three for 12 from the field tonight with eight points. Well, he's, been, he's a streaky type of shooter. When, he, when he's on, he's really hot. Uh, but I think, I think you can look for certainly a special where you get a double pick for either Banta or Wemhainer at the three-point arc right now. But there's plenty of time left, you know, if, if, you, if you're a Quincy ball club, you, you don't want to come out and, hur and hurry it. But look for a double pick for either Wienhainer or Banta at the three-point arc. Blue with two timeouts left, Quincy one, Quincy runs the play. Webhainer a three. Yes! A one-point game, one, one, one to play. Don't forget about the percentage, a steal by Johnson. Quincy takes it to the goal. Goal! No goal! Charging! No way. That's not a charge. I don't think I'd love to see it again. Offensive foul called on Tim Johnson. No goal at 103. Nardi wants a timeout. I think the, the biggest thing he wants to tell his, his young men is you must come and meet passes. The turnover was the result of the offensive ball player leaving and going up the floor. Well, Johnson also had a man across the lane that he could have gone to, but I'd still like to see Check it the out. defender. All right, let's take a look. Check it out. From on top, there's a steal by Johnson. He's going to take it on in. Here comes a defender across the lane. He's got to be set. Well, maybe he was. Was that Cole? Yeah. Well, that's I don't know. Cole, cool, but I think I think he was set. You know, it's a tough one. That's that gray area one. Let's see if we can hear. I don't know uh, in that huddle, Frank Nardi. Coming off the screen, as off you the said. Double pick. They look for Wim Hainer. You know, you got to go to your clutch ball player, and they did, and he's done that for him throughout his career. Uh, Nardi was talking about a 1 2 2 press. I don't know if he's referring to his ball club going to that or if he's anticipating it. And here it is from Quincy a 1 2 2 ball type press. If you're going to be a Quincy follower next year for the, for the tenure of Warren Wallace, you'll see this all the time. Bloom leads by one. They have the ball, and Brandon Cole nearly gave it up. He did. Quincy forces the turnover and has the ball. If you know anything about Illinois basketball, you know that the legend at Quincy is if they've got you close in the last minute, they'll win. Let's see if it holds true. Webhainer and Meyer are outside. 
Banta grounded and nearly fouled. No call. Whistle away from the ball against Quincy. Got a blocking foul on Meyer, I believe, and that's going to put Bloom at the line because it was not player control, although it was with the offensive team. Three critical calls right in succession. Bang, bang, bang. The charge call, and then the traveling call, and now and this then the call. No, and then the, the no ball. call. Out front, exactly. Let's see, away from the ball. They're saying run set in a 